Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now this video wasn't something that I planned to do in advance, but when I heard about the debate started by David Lammy this week about white saviours, I really felt like I needed to respond. If you haven't heard about what it's about already, TV presenter and Strictly Come Dancing winner Stacey Dooley went out with comic relief to Africa this year, where she posted a picture of her and a malnourished eight-year-old boy. She tagged the picture, hashtag obsessed. In response to the photo she posted, David Lammy called her out on Twitter for being part of the white saviour complex. Now this is something which sees white people acting to help non-white people in a way that's self-righteous and self-serving. Today's society is most commonly associated with Western white people going out to Africa to help the poor. Many Africans outright have said that they find this patronising and offensive and a reminder of the history of slavery in the country. The white power complex is often used in association with poverty porn, the act of exploiting the poor in order to get a greater media response, such as taking photos or videos, which obviously something Stacey has been accused of doing. So when I came across this story yesterday, I found it incredibly difficult to read as someone who's been out to Africa to help the poor. I took videos and photos while I was out there. I wrote online about how life-changing my experience had been, which I meant in all sincerity. And I even worked with a newspaper to publish three online articles about Kenya. And this was something I'd already decided to do all over again. I'm going out to Rwanda to help the poor and visit my sponsor child, who I give money towards every month. Was I also part of the problem? Was I also part of the white power complex? I really had to take a step back for a few hours and think about what I was doing. Was I, unbeknownst, contributing to this image? Was I creating poverty porn? It was all a lot to consider. While I was thinking about this, Stacey responded on Twitter. Is the problem with me being white? She asked David Lammy. You could always go out there and raise awareness. It seemed like a natural response to many people. Thousands on Twitter were agreeing with her and I too for a moment wondered if the colour of my skin was the problem. Being a white saviour isn't necessarily about the colour of your skin. It's about the way that the West portrays Africans as never having the solution to their own problems and that they're essentially helpless without the hope of someone with white skin. The white saviour complex focuses on the celebrity of the problem at hand, like with Stacey Dooley, and makes those around her who are in need just props for the film. While Comic Relief highlights the problems and raises millions of pounds every year, it doesn't actually show what Africans are doing to help themselves. It's always us who are saving them from poverty. So what did I think this all meant for me heading out to Africa? And how should it reflect in the way that I talk to and treat people while I'm there? In some ways, I sat down and thought to myself, should I even be doing this at all? Personally, since a young age, I've never looked at people's skin colors and drawn up a difference. And with their financial situation, whether they're black, white, mixed race, Asian, or anything that they identify with, I never let that have an impact on the way that I treat them. I treated the kids in Kenya the same as I did when I was a teaching assistant at a school. I addressed their parents when I met them with the same respect. We chatted about the same things, family life, financial situations, and their children's milestones. It didn't make any difference to me wherever I was. And I felt I'd given those children the same love, attention, and smiles as I would if I saw a baby on the bus in London. When the children were talking about their aspirations of being doctors, nurses, mathematicians, and teachers, I didn't put them down because of their financial situation. I bricked them up the same that I would have if I was in a private school here. In the video I made, I was happy that I'd got across the amazing groundwork that was being done there in Africa, not by us at home, and I thought that I'd really captured the heart of the joy and beauty of Africa. I'd taken a camera with me not to create poverty porn, but to capture the reality of a nation. If you've seen my video from Kenya, then you'll know there's equal parts good and bad, sad and happy, upsetting and difficult to watch, and joyous. In fact, when I put the video out, one of the first comments I received from someone that I went on the trip with was, wow, we did so much dancing, there was so much joy there. I was so glad that I'd got that across first, before the poverty. And as for my sponsor, Child Solange, I didn't choose her because she was black, nor did I choose her because she was in poverty. I chose her because when I looked at her photo, I felt like we had a genuine connection. And that became true in our letters. And now I regularly pray for her and encourage her so that she can know that I'm not her savior, but she is the start of her own. Only showing Africans as helpless victims to be pitied, we miss the broader picture of the progress made in Africa. This is one of the things that David Lammy clapped back to Stacey, and he's right, Africa is going from strength to strength with its economy. Similarly, I believe that charity can and should be started at home, and I know that there are many people out there on the ground in Africa working really hard to find solutions to the problems. But does that mean we should stop aiding? No. 
Don't be tempted to leave your sense of humanity and responsibility and charity just at the border of the English Channel and decide to cut all ties with any donations you give to Africa. In my opinion at least, if there's a need for charity, whether that be Africa, Asia, America or further, we should answer to it. I don't think David Lammy is trying to stop white people from helping Africa. I think he just wants us to be conscious about the way that we do it. He wants us to recognise African success as much as the poverty. He wants us to portray them as finding solutions to their own problems, as well as receiving aid from across the world. But this left me on a really difficult to navigate path with just four months until I fly out to Africa once again. So I wanted to make sure that I was putting the right foot in the right direction. And I made some notes on what I'm going to do to try and help myself do that. And I'm gonna share those with you now. While we might not necessarily need saviors, People should help others no matter what their skin colour or situation. Many people have responded to David Lammy with this argument and I personally agree. There is a need for charity in every country everywhere and we should be willing to give to any person, nation or charitable organisation no matter what country they're from or what colour their skin. If people are needy, we shouldn't patronise them. It is true that there are some communities in Africa that face absolutely terrible poverty and they do need help, but that doesn't mean we should create poverty porn out of their situation. Sometimes I agree with David that comic relief can only show the problems and not the beauty of Africa. So when we're giving charitably to an organisation or to a person, we should look for their successes as well as their problems and make sure we highlight and emphasise what they're doing to help themselves. When people are in need, don't create a situation where you look better because of their loss, where you look greater because you're the one helping them. Giving should be about them and not you. But finally, don't be afraid to do something you think is right, even if someone else is telling you that it's wrong. While Lammy's comment definitely made me second guess my trip to Africa, when I thought about my reasons why, I decided that I was gonna do it regardless. And I know I can and will stay away from the great machine which is the white power complex and poverty porn, because I'm out there to glorify others and not myself, and to let the stories of others be heard before mine. Honestly, there's so much to say about this topic and I feel like I could talk about it or debate about it with someone for a long time, but I felt like I should just touch on it, even if it's just lightly and broadly like I have today. And apologies if I kept looking down onto the side during that, I did write down some notes to make sure that I got across everything that I really felt truly and properly without slipping up. However, if anyone was affected by anything I said in this video, if you agree or disagree, feel free to let me know by dropping me an email or just in the comment section below and we can have a talk about it. And finally, I'm not normally one for a public debate, in fact I don't really really like confrontation at all. So I guess this is my rule breaking for the week that the Magic Matchbox asked me to do. And so speaking of the Magic Matchbox, it's time to reveal today's Magic Match. And today's match says, make a log of your mistakes and try seeing them as strategies to move forward. Now I felt this match really spoke with my message today. Look at how maybe you have contributed to the white power complex or poverty porn or anything of the such and try and use those as strategies to avoid that next time. I'll see you next week.